In different chapters, we have obtained the information about natural resources of Maharashtra, their distribution and utilization in different parts of the state. We have also studied conditions related to agriculture, industries, population, etc. in the state. Using available resources, people from different areas try to attain development of the individuals, the society and that of the region. The availability of resources, their qualitative status, preparedness of people for using the resources, methods of resource utilization, the infrastructure that is available in the region, etc. are some of the factors on which the development depends. In this chapter, we are going to discuss the conditions related to regional development in Maharashtra. In the process, we shall be taking up the issues like what is the status of development in the different parts of the state? Why is it so? What factors are responsible for these conditions? Of course, before that, it is necessary to understand various concepts related to development. Let us start with the concept of development. Chapter 8 Regional Development Points to Learn 8.1 Concept of Development 8.2 Regional Development 8.3 Human Development Index 8.4 Regional Development in Maharashtra Learning Outcomes After learning this chapter, you can get the following informations. What is Regional Development? Concept of Human Development Index Factors which determine Human Development Index Human Development Index of Maharashtra What is Regional Imbalance? Causes of Regional Imbalance Development in development, change and growth are expected. Development takes place through change in the condition. Process of development proceeds through simple, small and continuous progressive changes in a sequential manner. Development means moving from simple or lower level condition to higher and progressing condition. Development process does not have a full stop. It is a continuous process. Hence, lower or higher condition are relative terms. Hence, what is expected in development is to move from the present condition to higher and more progressive condition. While bringing about the development of the things, it is necessary that we take extra efforts to see that all its components develop in due proportion. If development is all around, then only it will be called as development. Otherwise, it may just amount to growth of some dimensions. Eight point one Concept of Development You must have heard, read and also use the term development. However, defining the term concept is not all that easy. Almost everyone from individuals to nations want to achieve development. When we think of development with two questions, how is development being achieved? And to what extent it has been achieved? The first question is related to the process of development while the second one is related to the level of development. Eight point two Regional Development Regional Development means the development of people in the region. In this it is expected that people achieve prosperity in dimensions such as economic, social, 
cultural, etc. For number of reasons, the process of regional development becomes quite complex. Some of the reasons are related to the geographical conditions, while others are associated with social and cultural aspects. The availability of natural resources as well as their qualitative and quantitative levels largely depend on the geographical conditions in the region. People have to achieve development using the resources available in the region. At times, as and when the need arises, resources are not available in the region have to be obtained from other areas. In any society, there exist a number of groups of individuals. There is considerable diversity among such groups in terms of economic, educational, health aspects. Similarly, their customs, way of life, traditions, belief, faith, etc. also differ considerably. All these affect the willingness and ability of people in utilization of resources. Similar picture we get in the map of net zone area. It is shown in figure 8.3. It depicts the percentage of area under cultivation. Apart from both the districts of Mumbai which are totally urban, other districts have varied percentage of area under cultivation. Gadchiroli district records lowest percentage in terms of area under agriculture. Next to it, we have all the three districts of Kokan recording low percentage of cultivated land. These low percentages in the areas mentioned are due to high relief and low productivity of soils in Kokan and high proportion of forest area in Gadchiroli. Even the districts like Gondia, Bhandara and Chandrapur have low proportion of cultivated land. This also can be attributed to the fact that they have relatively high proportion of forest land. Rest of the districts have 50% of land under agriculture. Central Maharashtra has 65 to 80% of their geographical area under agriculture. Sometimes, when the information on standard of living becomes unavailable, we have to infer the level of standard of living from indirect sources. This can be done using certain indicators of consumptions. Use of domestic electricity in the area becomes one of the dependable indicator. A map of mean consumption of electricity in domestic sector from different districts is given in figure 8.4. It is quite natural that the people from the areas at advanced level of urbanization and industrialization would be consuming more electricity. The level of consumption ranges from 33 kilowatts per hour to 435 kilowatts per hour in our state. The areas where this consumption is very low are again the same area that we have identified in the other two maps discussed above. The regions with dominance of agrarian economy stands out to be the regions of low electricity consumptions. Let us see what is the level of industrialization in the state using the data on factory employment. The information available relates to the number of factory workers per lakh population. This map is given in figure 8.5. From the map, you will see that only in 9 districts we have more than 1000 factory workers per lakh population. These are Mumbai City and Suburban, Thane, Raigarh, Pune, Nasik, Aurangabad, Nagpur and Kolhapur. Certain districts in the central and eastern Maharashtra have even less than 500 persons out of 1 lakh people 
employed in different factories. Somewhat similar situation exists in Nandurbar and Sindhudurg districts also. Hence, the proportion of people engaged in primary occupation is quite high. Eight point four, regional development in Maharashtra. Maharashtra is considered as a progressive state of our nation. It is the second ranking state in terms of population. Mumbai, the capital city of the state, is recognized as the economic capital of the country. It is one of the leading states as far as the urbanization and industrialization are concerned. About 42% of the population of the state resides in urban areas. The conditions related to infrastructural facilities in the state are quite good as compared to the other states. Contribution of the state in the national economy is quite high. In the last few decades, the state has progressed considerably in the service sector, information technology, computerization, etc. However, this does not indicate that the progress of all the regions of the state is taking place at the same level. Let us try to understand the conditions of development in Maharashtra using the Human Development Index. See the map given in figure 8.1 and the information provided. This map is based on the values of Human Development Index of different districts in the state. The map reveals that the value of HDI for districts like Mumbai City, Mumbai Suburban and Thane is over 0 0.8. In the next group defined by HDI values from 7 point, repeat, from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 are districts like Pune, Raigad and Nagpur. However, 20 districts out of 35 record HDI index lower than 0 0.5. The districts like Nandurbar, Jalna, Yavatmal and Gatchiroli, this value is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. The districts having HDI less than 0 0.5 are by and large concentrated in the eastern part of the state. Of course, we have Nandurbar, Dule from North Maharashtra, Ratnagiri from Kokan, and Solapur from southern part in this group. This shows that the level of development in different parts of the state is variable and the differences in the level are quite large. The wide difference in the HDI values points towards the regional imbalance. This indicates that the development in the state is not all inclusive. Regional imbalance has serious and far-reaching effects on the social conditions. Hence, extra efforts need to be taken to reduce the imbalance. For this, we must find out what geographical reasons are responsible for such situations. Some maps are given in figures 8.2 to 8.5. Using these maps, let us try to understand the geographical reasons that have led to these conditions. The map shown in figure 8.2 depicts the distribution of percentage of workers engaged in agriculture. We have noted while discussing various occupations in chapter 3 that the primary occupations yield very low value returns compared to the efforts put in. Hence, per capita income in this sector is quite low. The map shows that as many as 80% of the total workers in some of the districts are engaged in the primary occupations. Except for the districts like Mumbai, City and Suburban, Thane, Pune, Nagpur, Raigad and Kolhapur, the percentage of workers engaged in agriculture is quite high, over 60%.
The districts mentioned above are known for having industrial base and high level of urbanization and hence greater proportions in the secondary and tertiary occupations is quite high. Levels of Regional Development In order to decide the level of development of a region, a number of criteria are used. At international level, in order to decide the level of development of various nations, World Bank has finalized almost 300 different indices related to different aspects. These includes main fields like agriculture, industry, mining, power sector, economic policies, health, education, science and technology, social policies, poverty, etc. On the basis of these criteria, the development of different nations in different years are studied and the levels are determined. It is not that the development levels are determined only at the international level. It can be determined for different regions in a nation or a province. Some of these criteria are used to determine the levels of different regions within a nation. The levels of development help in the process of regional planning. Difference in the levels of development and its reasons. The study of developmental levels at international, national or provincial levels reveals one thing very clearly, that different regions not only have variations in the development levels, but tremendous variations exist in the level of development amongst the regions. The development in certain areas may be at much lower level and some areas may be at very advanced stage of development. If in any region there exist very high differences in the levels of development among different parts, it is considered that there is imbalance in the development of the region. There can be different reasons for such regional imbalances. However, such conditions lead to serious and long-lasting effects. Hence, the issues like why the regional imbalance creeps in the development, what are the reasons for it, how can the imbalance be reduced, need to be addressed. Social sciences study these issues related to the development. Repeat, social sciences study these issues related to the development. Let us first try to understand the broad reasons that lead to regional imbalance. Variations in the natural conditions is the basic reason behind disparities or imbalance. There exists considerable difference in physical conditions of different regions in terms of physiography, rock types, climate, soils, etc. In a relatively smaller area, these differences are less. But when we consider regions with large area extent, differences in natural conditions of various parts of the region become prominent. The availability of natural resources is by and large determined by the natural conditions. Leads to the distinction in the availability of natural resources is by and large determined by the natural conditions leads to the distinction in the availability of resources. However, diversity and distinction themselves do not mean disparity and imbalance. Every region has one or other type of resources. There is no region in the world that is totally devoid of natural resources. Having the resources is one side of the story, but the other side of it, which equally or rather more important, is utilizing these resources. 
in order to utilize the resources in the region in proper manner, it is necessary to conduct a thorough study. Such studies need to address questions like what resources the region has. What is the quantitative and qualitative level of these resources? For what different work these can be utilized? It is necessary to study in detail these and similar questions. The resources of the region are to be utilized by the people of the region. However, skill and technology are necessary for using the resources. As a result of advancement in science and technology, the methods of resource utilization have changed to a considerable extent. There is a great difference in the production levels if the resources are being utilized through traditional methods or by modern technologies. The people of the region at times may not have modern technology. The absence of technology can impose serious limitations on the utilization of resources. Even if the technology is not available, at local level it can be developed or it can be obtained from other regions. However, to develop or utilize modern technology, it is necessary that the local people have the skill and ability. For this, they need to get its training. The most important among all the resources is the human resource. Hence, for utilization of any resource, it is necessary and essential that the human resource in the region gets developed. The qualitative development of human resource largely depends on education and health of the population. We have noted that all round growth of trees becomes possible because of organized system. However, because of the differences in the natural conditions of various sub-regions and variations in socio-cultural characteristics of different groups of individuals, there are limitations on emergence of organized system in the region as a whole. As a result, the pace of development amongst these groups and sub-regions does not remain same. This condition imposes limitation on all-round regional development. Due to difference in the pace of development, some groups or parts of the region lag behind on the path of development while others progress rapidly. This introduces imbalances or disparities in the development of the region. Such a development not only fails to become an all-round development but fails to maintain the all-inclusiveness. Change and growth are natural processes. However, the development does not take place naturally. It has to be achieved through proper planning. For this, different nations are taking efforts to achieve development through the process of regional planning. As we have planning commission at national level, there are similar planning commissions working at state, division or district levels also. These commissions prepare plans for different parts of the region and attempt the regional development. In order to achieve proper, all-round and all-inclusive development of any region, it is necessary to do the following three things. To provide facilities like shelter, health and education, which make people's life comfortable in the region. For this, make the distribution system of these facilities more strong and expand them and through this raise, repeat, and through this raise the standard of living of the people. To establish political, social and economic systems and institutions which will promote the dignity and respect of the people in the region. To generate situations 
so that people in the region can live a fearless life. Eight point three, Human Development Index. Till last few decades, development was being considered as purely economic concept. Therefore, indices like Gross Domestic Product (GDP) and Per Capita Gross Domestic Product (that is, Mean Standard of Living) were given more emphasis while determining the levels of development. The thought that just the economic prosperity does not mean development has now been well accepted. This thought does not relate to the individuals but also relates to the nations. Need to consider the status of people in the region with respect to health, education, social welfare along with their standard of living became stronger over a period of time. This led to the inclusion of Human Development Index as a criterion in determining the level of regional development. Following three factors are taken into consideration while deciding the Human Development Index. Mean Standard of Living Economic Factor Life Expectancy at Birth Health Factor Duration of Education Social Factor Human Development Index is expressed as a ratio with its values ranging between 0 and 1. For highly developed region, this value will be closer to 1, whereas for the regions where the level of development is less, this value will be decreasing. For the regions where the development level is quite low, the value will be closer to 0. 8.4. In order to understand the concept of development, it is necessary to know the difference between the three terms such as change, growth and development. Change is a natural process. With time, conditions change. However, it is necessary to keep in mind that change has a direction. Things can be changed in both the directions. Hence, it is required that while the change is occurring, we take utmost care. Every change may not lead to progressive development. Only if the change is progressive, it leads to development. Growth The word itself implies the direction. Growth is a change in the direction from lesser to more or from lower to higher. However, one may keep watching on what is growing. At times, unwanted things may grow. Undesired things like waste, disease, poverty, etc. can also grow. Therefore, just the growth makes no sense. You may have observed trees or cities growing. While the tree is growing, its different components like roots, stems, branches, leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. grow in proper proportion. None of the single component grows abnormally. All components grow with due proportion. Such a growth of all the components in due proportion is called all-around growth. Of course, a tree is a well-organized system. Hence, its all-around growth becomes easy. However, all the things do not have such an organized system. These facts impose limitations on all-round growth. From the above discussions, it should be clear to you that certain geographical conditions impose some limits on utilization of natural resources. Agriculture is the most ancient occupation of mankind. It basically depends on the land resources. However, the conditions of poor soil, rugged topography, low rainfall, etc. lead to the inefficient utilization of land resources of a region. 
the rugged topography limits the availability of the land for agriculture. Poor soil and low rainfall causes underutilization of the land resources. Besides this, the vagaries of monsoon rainfall lead to uncertainty in the level of agricultural production. Moreover, in the regions where majority of working population is still engaged in primary occupation, the standards of living are at low level. The regions with limited scope of natural resources fail to diversify the utilization and have to remain in the same primary occupation. This leads to a kind of a vicious circle. The poverty deprives them from the opportunities and lack of opportunities pushes them back to primary occupation. The regional imbalances or the developmental disparities in a larger region have to be addressed seriously. In Maharashtra, as we have seen, there are number of districts where the human development index is low. In order to bridge the gaps in the developmental levels amongst various districts, the government is taking serious steps. Efforts are being made through establishments like MIDC to promote industrialization in different districts. Separate development boards have been established to reduce the gap in the development levels for areas like Kokan, Marathwada and Vidarbha. Gross Domestic Product GDP The market value of all the goods and services produced in the country during the period under consideration is called as Gross Domestic Product GDP. The ratio of GDP to the total population of the region is the per capita GDP and the same is called mean standard of living. The mean standard of living has been recognized at global level as the index of economic development. While studying economic development of various nations, this index is widely used. 